Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to go ahead and look at dimensional analysis. Uh, don't forget there is a graphic organizer online uh, which you can go ahead and follow along uh, with, this, uh, with this lecture set. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, dimensional analysis is hopefully and, and possibly something that is somewhat familiar to you. Um, specifically, it's a process where we are going to be converting between different units of measurement. Um, so for example, if I said we had uh, two minutes left in class uh, and you wanted to know how many seconds that were, uh, you'd be able to go ahead and say, all right, well, 60 seconds in one minute. If there are two minutes, I just have to double that. So that'd be 120 seconds. So this process is something that you've probably done quite frequently and, and a lot in your in your everyday life. Um, this process is going to be something that we're going to be doing a lot in this class as well. So once again, it's basically just the process of converting between different units. Now, in order for us to do this, we have to have a conversion factor. Um, a conversion factor is going to be any sort of equality or ratio uh, between two equivalent units. So for example, the conversion factor that I used before was 60 seconds is equal to one minute. So that's gonna be my equality. Um, there are 12 inches in one foot, for example. That's another example of a conversion factor. Um, and one more one uh, is seven days in one week. These are some examples of time, distance. But once again, there, there's a, an uncountable amount of, of conversion factors that you can go ahead and use. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Let's go ahead and look at a problem and identify how to approach dimensional analysis. Um, specifically, uh, looking at this, how many inches are in 2.0 feet? How many inches are in 2.0 feet? So in order to do this, we're gonna be using um, uh, the staircase method or ladder method, however you wanna look at this. Um, but what I always do is I take the problem, the number that I want to convert, which in this case is 2.0 feet, and I rewrite it. And I always include, I always include the units there. So 2.0 feet. And then I immediately set up this uh, little ladder here, this bracket. Um, and what this allows for me to do is analyze my units. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have this unit here, feet. Um, and when I go ahead and do dimensional laws, I always take this unit here and rewrite it down below. So feet is gonna go down below. And what's gonna go in the box, what goes in the box is the conversion factor. So now you're probably thinking, all right, do I know any conversion factors that relates feet to inches? Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. In this case, hopefully you know that uh, for every 12 inches, for every 12 inches, you have one foot. And notice that's the conversion factor, the top statement is equal to the bottom statement. And uh, what's nice about this is everything on top you're gonna multiply by, everything on bottom you divide by. So feet divided by feet end up canceling out. And essentially we get 2.0 times 12 divided by one will equal 24 inches. Now, as far as significant figures goes with dimensional analysis, the best way to approach this is whatever number of significant figures I start with is how many I end with. Uh, this has to do with the fact that our conversion factors are often, not always, um, exact measurements. And exact measurements have an infinite number of significant figures. So generally speaking, how many did I start with? Two. I'm going to end with two as well. All right, so going ahead and moving on here, our next question is this. If a man has a mass of 155 pounds, what is his mass in grams? Uh, for this one, what's quite nice is that I provided a uh, conversion factor. There are 453.6 grams, 453.6 grams for every one pound. So let's go ahead and get started. Remember, we never start with the, we never start with the conversion factor, we always start with the number that I'm trying to convert. So in this case, it's gonna be 155 pounds, 155 pounds. I write out my ladder. And remember, I always take the unit that I'm trying to get rid of and rewrite it down below. The reason I do that is because I want them to cancel. And in this case, I ask myself, do I know a conversion factor that equates pounds to grams? And I do. I know that for every 453.6 grams, it's going to be one pound. 
So the pounds and pounds cancel, and I end up doing uh, 155 times 453.6 divided by one to go ahead and get 70,308. Now I started with three significant figures, so it looks like I'm gonna get 70,300 grams, 70,300 grams. Okay, we have two more problems here, and these are gonna be looking at um, slightly different uh, ways of, of, of approaching these problems and making sure we understand some of the specific and important aspects of dimensional analysis. So for here, we now have a two parts of this unit, meaning that there's going to be a numerator and a denominator to this unit, miles per hour. So we're going to go ahead and start by writing out our given number that we're going to um, that we're going to convert, and that is 25.5 miles. And when I ever see like per something, I always like to write per the unit hour. But we know it's for every one hour that I've been driving or running if I can run that fast. So let's go ahead and get started here. So we always want to take the unit and write it the opposite. We always want to take the unit and write the opposite. And whenever I have multiple units that I need to convert, I really just try to focus on one of them at a time. So why don't we go ahead and start with the hour since it's on the denominator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my unit hour, rewrite it on top because that is opposite. And then I'm going to write the unit that I'm converting to on the bottom. So the, the hour is going to be converted to seconds. The hour is going to be converted to seconds. So um, just because I happen to know what this is, we'll go ahead and do that. So we know that for every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. Now, a couple of things that you can go ahead and do, and I'll go ahead and kind of walk you through my thought process on this. Um, if you happen to know, if you happen to know the number of meters there are in a mile, you can go ahead and um, use that conversion factor. I'm actually going to go ahead and look that one up right now. How many meters are in a mile? Meters to mile. Handy dandy cell phone here. Um, the other thing you could go ahead and do, the other thing you can go ahead and do is you could go ahead and uh, convert from miles to feet. I happen to know that there are 5,280 feet for every mile. I know that there are 12 inch for every foot. I know that there's 2.5 centimeters, centimeters for every inch. And then we could say that there's 100 centimeters for every meter. Now, that would be a perfectly fine and, and appropriate step way to, to go about that problem. But uh, it's a lot of steps. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. We're going to just look up uh, the amount of, of miles to meters. Miles to meters. And we're going to go ahead and see how many this is. So nice. It looks like there are, for every mile, for every mile, there is... 1,609 about meters. It says 1,609.344 meters. So that one's not an exact measurement, but it's close. So there's four significant figures. Uh, one hour to 3,600 uh, 3, seconds is an exact measurement. So we'll go ahead and cancel those out here. So I have my second in the denominator, miles and miles, giving me my meters in the numerator. So really this just becomes 25.5 times 1609 divided by 3600 to get us 11.4 meters per second. 11.4 meters per second. So once again, notice that you could look up the uh, conversion factors. Um, there's not many that you're expected to know, but having a handful memorized really makes your life easier. Um, excellent. Uh, so moving on to the last one here, moving on to the last one here. Uh, and this is as follows. Sometimes you'll have to convert squared or cubic units. Um, and, and that can be a little tricky. That can be a little frustrating. Um, but there's a few ways that you can approach this. So let's go ahead and try it out here. Uh, we have 32.9 inches squared, 32.9 uh, inches squared. And I want to convert this to centimeters squared. Well, over on the right hand side here, it seems that I have provided us with a conversion factor. Um, I want to write the inches down below, convert it to centimeters up above. And I know that for every one inch, there is 2.54 centimeters. For every one inch, there's 2.54 centimeters. Now, unfortunately, inches doesn't cancel out with inches squared. One of the easiest ways to approach this 
is by squaring the entire function on the top and bottom, the entire conversion factor. So essentially what this becomes is 32.9 inches squared multiplied by 2.54 squared times centimeter squared divided by one squared and inches squared. So the inches squared we know can now cancel with the inches squared. One squared is just one and this basically becomes 32.9 times 2.54 squared. Um, and that gets us 212 to 12 centimeters squared. So essentially that's it. Basically when you're doing dimensional analysis the trick is canceling out the unit by rewriting the new unit down below um, or rather opposite uh, the side that the current unit is written. And if you have cubed or squared units you want to go ahead and cube or square the conversion factor respectively. Uh, hope this helps and remember um, to follow along with the graphic organizers uh, the best you can. Thanks a lot you guys.